Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm from the government, and I'm here to sell you electricity. Don't laugh. So I'm from Maplewood. I'm the mayor. I'm Vic DeLuca. And I notice we have some Maplewood people here to keep me honest. I see Bob and Tracy's here, too. OK, hi, Tracy. So thanks uh, for coming out. And uh, we should give Randy a round of applause for getting us off here. So I'm going to tell you about Maplewood quickly. Uh, 25,000 people are in Essex County. We've been doing sustainability work for a number of years. We're, we've achieved our silver certification. We're in our second three-year um, cycle of that. We got second place in the solar challenge. We've been doing a lot of work. Uh, of course, our green team is very active. We have an environmental advisory committee. Let's see if I get this right. You know, we do all the standard things that most municipalities do. We look at energy. We're involved in um, uh, trying to, as, as we saw that bottom line, trying to keep our municipal use down. Uh, we've gotten into the electric vehicles, um, both for our use and uh, trying to encourage it in the community. We have a group, what we call ourselves Sustainable Maplewood, at the town level. Uh, it's a 10-person committee. We bring together all the folks, all the different departments, to keep everybody on the, pa on the same page. And if I would just to give you one advice, it is to make sure you get everybody around the same table in the same room when you're talking about sustainability. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of inertia. And you need to get everybody there talking and moving in the same direction. So setting up some kind of a coordinating group on the municipal level is very important to move things through. Um, what, I'm, what I got paid to tell you uh, about today is our energy aggregation. So what is that? So it's really bringing together um, different groups. This was passed by the BPU years ago. Actually, two cycles. The first cycle you had to opt in. The second cycle now you opt out. And essentially, a municipality negotiates with an electric generator through other parties, uh, consulting consultants, to purchase electricity on behalf of their residents. So when I said I was selling you electricity, essentially I am. Uh, I'm uh, looking to go out as a municipality and broker um, to buy electricity for the residents in our community. Um, it's, a, it's a very strange system we have. Right now we have a default system that you automatically buy the electricity from your utility. PSE&G, JCP&L, um, whatever else we have in the state, Rockland, Atlantic Electric. So you have no choice. So this gives you an opportunity at the uh, town level to intervene on behalf of your residents. But this is all about purchasing power, having the capacity to go out and wheel and deal in big, big, big markets. So what you need to do is you need to have some clout. And one of the ways we thought of having clout was as you get into this energy aggregation process, we thought of putting together an alliance. So what we did is we've worked with uh, five other municipalities in Essex County. We've set ourselves up as the Sustainable Essex Alliance. Uh, the, the, it's it's kind of weird how it worked out. Uh, and actually, um, this is an old slide, and I see Gray and the folks from Montclair. I, don't, I have to apologize. I didn't have a magic marker to color you in, but Montclair is in. So on the northern part of Essex, we have Glen Ridge, Montclair, Verona. And we've kind of that, if you figure out sort of a game sequence, we've gotten that corner up there. And then down the bottom, we have Milburn, Maplewood, and South Orange. So six towns have come together. Um, and we've uh, worked through a lot of the process to say we're going to work together and we're going to buy electricity on behalf of our residents. Why do you need six towns or why do you need some amount of, money, uh, some amount of people? It's because you have to show to these generators that it's worth their while to invest in this process. Our goal here is to purchase electricity for our residents that is greener and cheaper. And we think that having the, the clout, the, the, uh, the wherewithal to say that we have so many customers um, is going to help us be able to do that. So is this a big deal? Well, 
We added up the number of people in each of our six towns. We have 119,000 residents. If we were one municipality, we'd be the fifth largest municipality in New Jersey. So we're pretty big. Right after you see Newark, Jersey City, Patterson, Elizabeth, then the next biggest town in New Jersey is Sustainable Essex Alliance. So when we go out there, we can talk to these uh, energy providers and um, making sure that we can get the best. So we're going to work, and so what's the process? So the process is each of the municipalities pass an ordinance saying that they want to do electric generation. And this is all spelt out in the law, and there's consultants to hold, your, hold our hands and work through this. But essentially, each of the municipalities has to pass an ordinance. You then pass a resolution uh, designating that you're going to join the co-op. You have a lead agency in any shared service. You have a lead municipality. In this instance, Maplewood is the lead municipality. As a group, they interviewed um, almost a half a dozen, or looked at almost a half a dozen consultants, interviewed some of those, selected a consultant. We now have a contract with a consultant who's going to be working on behalf of those 119,000 people to go out and talk to electric generators to see what we can um, come up with. Uh, they will, this, these uh, six towns will also launch a public relations or public uh, education campaign. Uh, it'll be generic to the whole community aggregation um, message, but it'll also be site specific to their town. They may have some particular things that they want to emphasize. Uh, and we're looking to switch our providers in the fourth quarter. Now, the way it works is if you have people in your community that said, I, you know, I trust PSE and G more than I trust uh, your, my municipality, well, they can still opt out. They can opt out of this energy aggregation and they can stay with PSC and G. They can go to another provider. So this gives your residents an opportunity there, there, to uh, make his or her own choice uh, if they don't want to join the municipal aggregation. So um, I, I just would like to encourage you to think about going back to your municipalities, talking with your uh, elected officials, asking them what they're doing in this arena. Uh, we see this as an opportunity not only to, as I said, provide that clean and green, uh, clean and cheaper energy to uh, electric to our residents, but also to drive the market. You know, if we can get 119,000 119, um, residents focused on this, we can move the, uh, the green market, the green energy production market. We're getting some more, uh, uh, trying to sh show some more demand, and that's going to help move the market and move the investments into that uh, alternative energy arena. So we think this is, this is a real win on a lot of levels and urge you to go back and um, talk to your municipalities. And lastly, um, as much as we are doing this stuff locally, I always like to remind people that we have to keep our eyes on the bigger prize. Uh, you know, we have to work locally, but also focus um, uh, globally. I would urge you, as we have done in Maplewood, to uh, ask your elected officials to commit to the Paris climate uh, in any way that they have to do. Um, and we, we've done that, we've passed resolutions, we've taken all these steps. We need to have that big vision that we're also sending that message to our residents that this is important, that the work we're doing on the ground is part of a larger global effort to uh, make the changes that we need. So that's it. Thanks very much. And we crunch the numbers, and doing, uh, depending on how much green energy you buy, that can be the single most effective thing a municipality can do to lower its greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so thank you very much. Next up we have Amanda, I won't butcher your name again, but please, but please tell us when you come up, uh, from Secaucus. Uh, Amanda Neshawat, uh, Environmental Director, almost, um, in Sea Caucus. Thanks for inviting us here today. We're excited to be here. So Sea Caucus is located in Hudson County. It's about 15 minutes outside of New York City. Um, we're about 18,000 people. And the demographics are rapidly changing in our community because of the great place to live and the close proximity to New York City. Um, our mayor and council are very green. Our mayor is very concerned about climate change. 
Fortunately, our residents are very supportive of any of the sustainability initiatives that we've been doing, um, so that's great. But I kind of just wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing this year. Um, we're fo focusing this year on climate action. It's our year of climate action. And I won't go through all of these initiatives, um, but just some of the things that I think might interest you. We're also looking into energy aggregation. Our consultant actually feels that because of our specific energy profile that um, we might be a good candidate to be on our own and we're actually looking to find the most amount of renewable energy while uh, keeping the cost the same or less. Uh, so working on that. We're also working on a climate action plan. Hopefully we'll be done by the end of the year and start um, implementation next year. Schneider Electric is actually helping us with uh, that program. So we're doing a lot. Like I said, Secaucus is committed to sustainability. And when I started working with uh, the town of Secaucus um, about eight years ago, our mayor and council, were, they were very interested in getting certified with Sustainable Jersey. And it really acted as a guide for me um, as a sustainability professional to you know, implement some of the programs that um, really could benefit our community and the environment. One of the first things that we decided to do was go right for silver. <laughs> um, and I looked for the uh, actions that had the most amount of points. One of them was the fleet inventory. So at that point, our community did not have a comprehensive fleet inventory. Some of the departments had them on their own. And so we combined them all. We found all of the cars possible in our fleet. Um, and we uh, input all the data into the fleet inventory spreadsheet that Sustainable Jersey provides. Um, and we, when we were done, we were pretty shocked at how big our fleet was as a municipality, but also um, the cost for maintenance of our cars and also gasoline. Um, a single police car cost us between six to $800 a month. And we were pretty shocked, we didn't realize that. Um, at the time, our town administrator said, hey, why don't we look um, and find um, electric cars? Maybe they're actually cheaper. And in the long term, they are to a municipality. Um, so we basically went um, to get two smart cars. We leased them. They were like $89 a month. I don't want to advertise for smart, but um, they were $89 a month, and they were about $0.18 cents per hour um, on average to charge. So our mayor loved them so much that we are looking to expand our EV fleet to get more. Obviously, um, with electric vehicles, we also had to get charging stations. And so we are very thankful because we received... Um, uh, grant money from the DEP for, through their It Pays to Plug In program. We got four charging stations, one's in our municipal lot with a dual port for both of our smart cars, um, and then the other three are located in municipal lots that um, where the public can also use. So um, I've had three phone calls this year um, from residents who are asking about the electric cars. They're looking into purchasing electric cars. One actually already did. Um, and I see her using the uh, charging stations a whole bunch in our municipal lots. So that's kind of what we wanted to see. We wanted to reduce range anxiety and support residents who are looking to make this change. Um, so I said residents love our electric cars. They love how quiet they are. They love the idea of never getting oil changes or you know maintenance. Um, and our mayor and council are very excited about the positive response from residents as well. So one of the things that I have to do, um, as uh, someone said earlier, um, is I have to work with every single department in order to make sustainability work in my community. Um, it's really um, in every decision that we make as a municipality. Um, and one of the things that we ended up doing was we became part of a pilot program along with Woodbridge and Montclair um, to do a, with the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, to do a alternative fuel vehicle readiness plan. Um, right now the guidebook is uh, available so municipalities can look it up. Basically, it gives, it's a guidebook for um, you know, towns that want to increase their fleet, their EV fleet, um, and, and kind of go through all the challenges that you may um, you know, uh, run into. So it's a great guidebook. But what they ended up doing for us was creating a map of the high priority locations in Secaucus where we really could use a charging station. So um, right now we are working with the engineering department. Um, when a plan for a project comes to um, Jennifer's desk, uh, she sends it to my department and we look to see on our map if it's a priority location. And if it is, we send a recommendation letter during the uh, zoning permit review, um, and then we'll see if that developer decides to put a charging station. And to be honest, this has only happened once this year, and they did actually put a charging station in. I can't mention the company because the uh, approval is not, uh, it's not you know, done yet. 
But uh, we also work with our um, Sea Caucus Police Department. They are ready to uh, purchase EVs um, for, you know, for their fleet. Um, it's the range is not where it, they want it to be at the moment, but I expect it to get better in the next three to five years. Um, and the fire departments actually, you know, they've been trained on how to, uh, you know, uh, respond to an electric car that has gone on fire, which actually was a sustainable Jersey uh, recommendation. And I have to give a shout out to nearby communities that have worked with us. It's really important to reach out to nearby communities that are already leading the charge. Um, and I have to give a shout out to Montclair, our friends in Montclair. Thank you, Gray. Um, because when we were deciding to get a charging station, we ended up going to Montclair and looking at their parking lots and what kind of charging stations they had and the issues and challenges that they had um, with getting them. So just quickly to run through these challenges that we had that you might run into. Um, finding a co-op to purchase an electric vehicle was a little bit hard for us. I think that sometimes government procurement of vehicles is difficult and because of the small pool available of, of electric cars, it, was, it wasn't that easy. Um, we also, there was a lot of, um, we had to actually bring back these two smart cars, they were leased. So we have a new smart car and we're looking to get another one. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of um, companies, um, automobile companies, don't actually let governments lease cars, so we're trying to change that. <laughs> I actually created a Twitter account to tweet at some of the companies just to tell them that we want to lease their car. <laughs> um, Finding ideal locations in town is very important. I really do suggest if um, municipalities want to you know, set up charging stations that they do actually create this high priority location map for the community. Um, I, you know, there was some lack of parking spaces in our municipal lots that, you know, where we kind of decided not to put charging stations because of that. And uh, changing station, uh, charging stations curbside. Right now we do have a couple of residents that are literally uh, putting lines outside their window t across the sidewalk to charge their car, and we're trying to figure out a way to, um, you know, help those residents out. So um, we are, you know, lo we're looking ahead. I think that one of the great things about having charging stations and electric cars is um, it makes our community look, you know, innovative and, and, and forward-thinking. Um, so one of the things that we are doing was we're in actually another pilot program. Um, with Hudson County, a microgrid program. Um, we are currently looking for all the critical facilities to set up um, you know, this microgrid to, and we've decided to um, also hook up our charging station in our municipal parking lot, um, because we do see EVs as a way of creating a more resilient community. During Sandy, it was very difficult to find gasoline for our, um, for our OEM and for our police vehicles, so we see this as a resiliency measure. Um, we are going to get new EVs. Our parking enforcement is considering uh, purchasing electric uh, smart cars because of how affordable they are. Um, and our recycling enforcement official is also looking into getting one as well. Um, and we are looking for innovative projects like hydrogen fuel cell stations. We have a fireman in town who's very excited and you know, very passionate about this. So um, he's looking for ways that we can work with the West Coast to actually bring some um, you know, to the East Coast and Sea Caucus. That's it, thank you so much. That was great, thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Carolyn Ehrlich, uh, who is the Chief of Staff and the Chief Sustainability Taskmaster for the Town of Woodbridge, and also a member of the Sustainable Jersey Board of Trustees. Carolyn? Everybody. So um, up until about 10 minutes ago, Woodbridge Township was the sixth largest municipality. <laughs> <laughs> but we just got knocked down by Mayor DeLuca to the seventh. But uh, we're actually, we're made up of 10 towns. We have over 100,000 residents five downtowns, three train stations, and every highway just about in the state goes through us, which makes it a great location. Um, what makes Woodbridge special, as the other two speakers talked about, and our magic comes from our team. The team starts with the mayor, who has been, Mayor McCormick has been an unbelievable leader and supporter in this whole program. Our directors, every single one of them, goes over and beyond what their job responsibilities are. For instance, our director of health, they just don't go into the preschools 
and the restaurants and do their, their, you know, their, their, their inspection, they give the preschoolers a list of things that they can do that are green. And it's a checklist. And if they check enough, the mayor comes by and gives them a proclamation as a good green. So we use our directors for that. Our director of planning has taken the lead role in our electric vehicles and our solar uh, initiatives. So everybody's involved. Everybody, the engineering, they are putting a rainforest in a week. It's unbelievable, rain garden. It's just unreal. This is, um, I'm gonna skip over this. Our director of communications makes us put on a bragging slide everywhere we go and we don't have to. I really want to talk to you about what we have done with um, our overall goal of reduction in greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. We put together a climate action plan and we've been following that dil diligently. Our first step was to really work on our infrastructure. 10 years ago, we did a BPU energy audit and then we did capital bonds. We we're very fortunate that we can just do, pay for this out of capital bonding rather than having to do an EFIP and um, schools would have to do that, but we don't have to, we just bond and the mayor doesn't worry about it. So we went through the first list of energy efficiencies, all the lights, the sensors, the thermostats, the um, HVAC systems, and we really made a difference. But 10 years has gone by since we've done it. And guess what? You gotta do another audit. And they come to me and they go, Carol, you gotta replace your lights. And I go, no way, I did that already. But 10 years later, there's a new technology and it actually saves more. So we have to do lights, we have to do some new sensors, the ones we missed. Um, our pump stations, we have nine pump stations. I, I didn't, the first time around, I don't know if we did the audit in the pump stations. So we have to replace all of those motors and they use a lot of energy and we need air conditioners, chillers, and all of that. So we're looking at between a half million to a million dollar capital improvement program. And on the way down here, I, the mayor called and I said, so can I announce that you're doing a bond for a million dollars this year? He said, no, but we'll, we'll, we'll probably be doing it over two years. So we are committed to doing this next group of all of these energy upgrades. Another thing that we've been working on is, um, oh, before I go to that, this is an important slide. So we have the most amazing community center in Woodbridge. It's got an ice skating rink, a swimming pool, a roller skating rink, a basketball court, and a fitness center. Now, if you can imagine the kind of energy that you need to use to keep the ice frozen, and the water warm. It is just unimaginable. The amount of lights in that building, the building actually sits on three acres. The building, not the parking lot, the building itself, it is totally huge. So we finally did the audit there and got the people in and we are just saving so much money. Every single light bulb in the building and in the parking lots was changed to LED. And, and one of the things that we, the mayor always says is it has to be both greens, green for the environment and green for the wallet. And doing these energy changes is definitely both greens. BPU with their clean energy program, you would actually be foolish if you weren't doing these upgrades because with the rebates that you get back and the energy savings, all of this work is going to be paid for in five years. And, and that doesn't even speak to the kilowatts that have been saved and how much it's lowered our, our greenhouse gas emissions. So this is a, a testimony 
to what investing in your infrastructure does for your municipal taxes, because it will lower them, and for the environment. So it's a total win-win. Another thing that um, Randy asked me to speak about is the microgrid. BPU has given out grants to a few towns to investigate the building of a microgrid. What a microgrid is, it's basically a parallel electrical system to the electric grid. So that if the electric grid goes down because of a storm or whatever, this can become activated and your prime buildings, your police, if you have a hospital, we don't have one, your fire, schools, whatever is in within that microgrid um, will have the energy to continue to stay live. Now, we, what we did was we took a kind of a rectangle in our downtown that included the police station, the firehouse, the school, but we also included the bagel shop because if we have to be down there, we all have to be able to eat. And during Sandy, some of us slept in town hall. And when we got up in the morning, it was, where are we going to get coffee? You know, so there are things that are absolutely necessary. So you need to think beyond just, you know, the, the, the main town buildings. You need to think about gas stations. Remember those long lines during Sandy? So, um, so what the microgrid does, it takes... Uh, renewable energy sources and puts them throughout the grid so that they can go, you switch a switch and they go on. Another thing the microgrid can do is if you keep it running, even when the electric system is running, you can sell that energy back to the grid and make some of that investment into the microgrid. The money can come back. One of my, so how many of you here, as you're driving down the street and you get to a construction site and you see the police car on the side with the lights flashing and the air conditioning going, how many people get totally crazy when you see that? Oh my God, it's like, it's the worst. So thankfully we got, we found a company, we got a grant from the Garnier Foundation through Sustainable Jersey and this company puts the battery into the car that allows the police to turn off the motor, the lights still go, the air conditioning still works, and if they have to get out of there in a second, they just hit the gas and they're back onto their regular flows. So we got, so we're using that grant for one of the cars, but when they came and they did the demonstration, we were all so excited that the mayor has agreed to buy two more. Then after the year, we'll do the analysis to see how well it works, and then we will invest in more because this is just one of the fantastic things. At the same time, though, after we decided to purchase this, we saw, and I don't know how many of you have seen this, Ford just announced that come next, a year from now, a sum, in next summer, they are going to be putting out a hybrid battery operated car that'll do the same thing and is a hybrid. So those of you who are from municipalities and you're gonna be talking about what cars you wanna buy for your police or public works for next year, keep Ford in mind and maybe we can all upgrade our fleet at the same time. And I know Secaucus, you're gonna love this idea. <laughs> I'll send you the information when we get back. Oh, here, see, this is the slide about that. And we are also looking at the electric vehicle. And we've also done the energy ag aggregation. I won't go into that too much. Outreach is key to every single thing that we do. And I want to... Um, you know, we also push the direct install program with the businesses. The seal power, which is um, $49 for people to get home audits, and Elizabethtown Gas is our local provider, and they offer free home energy audits. I had one, 
it's amazing what they told me and what they can do for me. So uh, that's, a, and it's not just wherever you are, check with your local utilities, because I believe a lot of them are doing that now. We are building, as I mentioned before, a lot of rain gardens, but I want to get to this one, Blue Acres, because you may not think, so, so the Blue Acres was a program after Hurricane Sandy, where they came in and they bought out the homes that were at risk for flooding. And we really got very good participation because the people who lived in our Blue Acres area were really totally fed up. And then we brought in Rutgers, and they have put together a whole plan for us on how to take that lemon and turn it into lemonade and transform it into a beautiful um, a, a wetlands, a meadow, walking paths. And, um, so, and, and, and watching that restoration go on is just a beautiful thing. But this is also an energy savings because we got rid of all those homes and we got rid of those roads. And so as we were doing an analysis of how we saved energy, Sustainable Jersey said, you know, you can count that. That really is an energy savings. So um, when you're looking at how you can save energy, you can think outside of the box. And every little thing really does help. So thank you. Stay here. Oh. Thanks, Carol. I, I, I love how Woodbridge operates. They, um, every year they look at all the Sustainable Jersey actions, every single one, and they start with the premise of, we're going to do it. And they don't do every single one. Um, but there has to be a reason why they don't do it. They start with the premise of, we're going to do it. <laughs> um, and they do most of it. And I think a lot of people look at Woodbridge um, as a model and as an example for, for what can be achieved. They are the Sustainable Jersey champion. They score the most points in the program every single year. And uh, I don't know if you remember the picture, but remember I showed a, a, a slide with all the mayors pledging to achieve the gold star in energy. And Mayor McCormick was there, and he looked really angry because he's looking at all the other mayors and he's like, I'm gonna be first. <laughs> um, well, I've got a special treat for you today because um, they are first. And so today I am really pleased to recognize Woodbridge as the first municipality. <laughs> to achieve the gold star in energy. Now, now this is not actually the gold star. We will formally confer the gold star with anyone else who gets it. There are some others who are hot on the trail um, at, our, uh, at, at our awards luncheon at the League of Municipalities in November. Um, and Mayor McCormick will be there. But for now, I would like to confer this special award recognizing Woodbridge Township as the first to achieve the gold star standard in energy. And Carol, and uh, don't you want to bring your whole team up to uh, receive the award? Now, please say a few words and tell us how you did it. Oh my God, this is, this is really, you can see on my face, I am so happy, I'm so excited. Um, Tom and Jeff did almost all of the work, so thank you. And um, we did have help from a consultant, Greener by Design, but also a big portion of us getting this has to do with sustainable Jersey. First of all, they gave us the roadmap. They said to us, if you do this, 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 and this, then you will be able to get gold. And they've given everybody in this room that roadmap. And we can all do this together and start that movement and I'm not taking off my shirt. <laughs> And 
And as we were getting close to the end, it was really Randy and his team worked as hard as we did because as much as we want this, he wanted to start the movement and be able to give this. So they helped kind of really pull us in, like, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. You got to do this. We did it. And he pulled us in. And I love everybody on Sustainable Jersey staff. You are the best and you are my heroes. Thank you.